welcome to the fourth and final review of the evening. Up this time is uh, Daimo. Daimo, uh, I think that's how the, this is pronounced. It's a shortening of the word diamond. Daimo XL. Um, and indeed, with that, it is a intense, addictive, and difficult just one more round score chaser. Perfect for playing while uh, waiting in queue for another game. Like, especially, uh, I guess that's especially uh, true with the advent of Steam Deck. So, so like, we're like we're competing with Super Hexagon here, though. So, is sort of, but not really. I really couldn't give you an accurate analog to what this game is. Like, uh, Petty asked me if this is like Kicks, like in the most basic of ideas, like it in that you are a I don't know dot that moves along pathways to, you know, make lines, sort of. But here, you know, it's all confined to a diamond. Like, see, you know, the basic premise here is you got to ride along these rails and, you know, not get hit. Form form triangles. Form triangles form a complete diamond. Like, but as you can see, you are interrupted with uh, a meteor shower. And unlike, say, kicks, those sparks, those are um, helpful. Uh, those are, will either give you more score, or if they hit a meteor, they'll break it, shatter it. Um, but the meteors aren't the only threat that you will face. Um, later on, like you'll encounter these dark clouds that will cover up a node or a lot or they'll break a line um you are also timed on this um you can see the triangle shrinking uh if the triangles shrink to full you know down fully i believe you do have to redraw the lines mm-hmm. and you can't fiddle on the uh base lines I'm not exactly sure what you're asking here. Once you hit the button to go to one of the to one of the corners okay. of the center, you are locked okay. into that movement. Oh yes, you are. Like you're committed, and yeah, that can fuck up your game, <laughs> especially uh, depending like the kind of controller you might be using. It, like if it's sensitive to moving along one of the ax- axes or whatever. Yeah, you're going to have kind of a bad time. If it were me, I would probably have programmed this to be optimally played with a D-pad, but... Yeah, the thing is... You'd have to then mentally program yourself so that when you're on the left side, you have to press up and down to go to the top and bottom ones. Yeah, the thing is, this is apparently a remake of an unreleased mobile game. And I can definitely see it. Uh-huh. Like, um... Oh, come on, that, that hitbox was bullshit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, as far as um, goals are concerned, uh, there's a whole, like, um, there's a whole bunch of them uh, uh, which involve unlocking uh, different cursors. You have to have a triangle going before you can get a diamond, right? Not necessarily in the sense or did that just you, the in, or did just the inner lines also have to be matched. Um, you have to do the inner lines. You have to do the whole thing. Yeah, Petty is showing off the different curves. So, so the diamond isn't get around the outside. Yeah, but um, like yeah, you can see the first uh, unlockable is to get um, 150 points. Um, and yeah, that can be a bit easier said than done. But uh, there's also, like, cumulative achievements, like the total amount of lines or uh, meteors uh, shattered or diamonds built um, are tabulated. And there's one... For some reason, we had to get a Douglas Adams reference here because there's a cursor unlock for if you die, if you have 42 points. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's an, I mean, I guess it's as good of an arbitrary number as any. 
Well, once again, that's a Douglas Adams. I know it's a Douglas Adams reference, but making the Douglas Adams reference is as good an arbitrary number as any. Yeah, and Fair it's enough. certainly easier to it's certainly easier to achieve than T he sixty nine. Mm. Well, yes and no, because th- there's not a really reliable way to get forty two. Like, you know, y- I'm not exactly sure what designates like uh, w- with one of the sparks getting three versus four, uh. like. You know, I, I'm sure there's a, do, it might have something to do with how many are going at the time. Could be like I'm sure there's a trick to all that, but once again, that that's kind of down to figuring out all the you know how, how all the score mechanics work and such. I'm like, um, and honestly, yeah, this game is a as the marketing blurbs put it, nice distraction. Um, if you're waiting for another game, but like actually sitting down and playing this, uh, not for very long. It's, you know, it doesn't really have that kind of staying power. And once again, it, that's why I'd say it's probably best for Steam Deck play or if it's uh, been released on the Switch there. Like they could see this working, you know, or if the mobile phone version ever got released. Yeah, I was going to say, or simply travel to the alternate timeline in which it was produced on the mobile phone. Like, or re- uh, released for the mobile phone. Yeah. I'm not saying... Yes, yes, a game that you are playing on your uh, desktop PC is definitely optimal for playing while you were in line for an ice cream at the shop. Well, it's more in the queue for, like, I guess, downloading another game. Like Fair, I guess. But still, like, yeah, I, I don't think this game has enough staying power. Um, you know, contrary to what the marketing says, like, I, after about, you know, 15 to 30 minutes tops, I was good. I think the problem is this is a bit too simple. Like, also, the randomized meteors are assholes because sometimes they just, oh, here, have every single meteor that appears is going to go through the center point. Yes, but more to the point, you know, you don't get any real variety here. It's the same board. It's the same diamond. It's the same background. Every I suppose time. it would be interesting if they had, like, a couple of different maps. Well, they could have It's small... not like it would be hard to design, although the number of nets available yeah. increases drastically with more than five points, but... At the very least, they could have a smaller diamond, a larger diamond. That would still be something. Uh-huh. You know, and I'm sure size would affect the play, um, the gameplay precipitously. It feels like one of those small things that um, would actually be a big tweak. But there's none of that. It's just the same diamond, the same gray background, the same meteorites every time. You know, and like I said, that is no die right now. No, you fucked it up. (laughs) <laughs> you, had, you had 42 for a second. Well, I mean, he had already done that. Remember, you're watching it on the on the stream, so, you know. Okay, you... I was I, okay. I was too late to complain about it, but I still stand by my statements. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, music wasn't particularly memorable. Like, maybe even disappointingly so. And... Yeah, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, like, literally about it to this game. Um, oh, it's, it's a Marvin head from the from the old TV series. Hmm. The the die with forty two cursor. Right. Um. Anyway, in terms of pricing, so this game clocks in at ninety nine cents. Um, from the movie, one of them. Anyway. Yeah. Um. And uh, on sale, it can be had as little as 49 cents. Um, anyway, um, as far as the dollar goes, sure. Like, it, it may not last very long, but, you know, we're talking a cup of, a cup of coffee money here. You're not going to go wrong. Cheap cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Like, uh... Anything else you two want to add? 
Uh, I think I'm good. Yeah, no, it's fun to watch, although <laughs> also very frustrating to watch. Yeah. Yeah, and there's also the Arcade Score Chaser Bundle, which has a whole bunch of games we haven't reviewed, so can't really speak on that, That though that is $7.93, so I imagine if you go in for the plunge there, it's not going to break your wallet. Anyway, so yeah, that'll about do it for this installment of Fragments of Silicon, uh, the reviews, and coming up on the week ahead, uh, let's see, on Wednesday, June 22nd, we will be having Chris Mango of Acute Mango. He is the developer of the releasing tomorrow at time of recording uh, JRPG homage Mango Mischief kind of a theme going on here. Like, but I'm not sure if Mangoes actually play a part in that. Like, anyway, um, yeah, this looks to be, you know, a homage to, like, Final Fantasy, <laughs> the 16-bit years, and the, the like, uh, specifically, like, the Final Fantasy games, since it's got that side view going, um, you know, hint, a lot of not square RPGs still use the uh, a head forward perspective. You know. Um, that being said, the world maps look a lot more like um, a second tier Inix game. You know, like the Seventh Saga or something like that. Um, anyway, so that's what we'll be covering on Wednesday. Um, we do have a new episode of Moonhawk Studios Presents planned. Um, with guests in tow, and you know, as far as I know, the entire cast and crew is has, you know, we are one again. So, and no Friday show this week. So, until Wednesday, I shall wish you good gaming. <laughs>